and I'm a really big person physically. So I had that since I was like 15, but it shifted once I got into the movies because I went from people, you know, holding their purse tight to people being like, oh, hey, come in my house. Hi, friends. Welcome back to Really Famous. You are about to get to know Omar Miller from Ballers, CSI Miami, 8 Mile, and the new CBS show, True Lies, on another level. You ready? Let's do it. I see you wearing your Ballers uh, sweatshirt. I like it. But that came oh, a little yeah. later. I have a whole bunch of like paraphernalia from shows and movies that I never wear. You look like a cheese ball if you're out wearing a baller shirt and you wear a baller shirt. Yeah, but that so is I such cool. So I love that stuff though. I like those are good mementos to have and to you know they to are. Have... And yeah. I can wear them around the house. I can you right, know, I can, exactly. like, see inside Miami hats and uh, you know the like a showy dance, coffee mugs and stuff like that. It's really cool. Exactly. But, yeah, but you can't wear it anywhere else. So <laughs> That's too bad. It's it's too bad because you should. Yeah, it's but cool you things. look like a total cornball if you're out I with guess. a ball of sweatshirt on. Maybe, know, you're... maybe in a little bit more time. Maybe as time passes, but it's still too fresh to walk around with. Now it looks like I'm trying to remind people that I was on ball. There's if I was out, you <laughs> right. see me at Costco with a ball of sweatshirt on. It's like, oh hey man, how's it going? <laughs> you know, people. Right. Like, you know who can wear it though. Than... You know who can wear it is your mom. Your mom can go out and buy your dad. Are you crazy? My mom wears stuff all over the place. Good. And, and you should see the stuff. She comes home. She'll be like, "Yeah, somebody asked me if I was on CSI Miami today because she had a hat on." But like, you know, she's got all kind of. She gets all the stuff. All the yeah. kitchen sweet facial creams and all sorts of shit. That's good stuff. See, that's okay. So you wear it at home. She wears it out. Everything is good. There it is. <laughs> yeah. So okay, so that let so then after eight mile, then what was your first gig after that? Would you was that CSI already? No, you. By the way, I made a little list as I was doing my research, and it's pretty incredible the major players that you have worked with in your career. Oh like, man, I mean, um, can I can I rattle off some names real quick? Because it's okay. crazy. Look good. Okay, Spike Lee, J Lo. Susan Sarandon, Richard Gere, Samuel L. Jackson, Nicolas Cage, Halle Berry, Benicio del Toro, John Leguizamo, Sylvester Stallone. I mean, this is insane. And there's more. I tell you, I made a lot of people a lot of money. You and it's, did, and it's been, and it's, it's been a, a a blessing to get to mix it up. It's great. It's really great. Yeah, to mix it up because that's the thing too. And I think, isn't that one of the things that tends to draw people into acting is that there is such variety too. Like it's not the same day job or whatever where you get to really experience different people in your roles, right? And then just also you get to meet well, so many people. Well, that's the key. You get, to access, you get to access so many different worlds. You have the key to so many different worlds through your job. And then once you actually get a job, the research that you get to do and just the exposure to different walks of life is it's got to be one of the best fields of work in the world for that. Because you can you can I remember when I first got on CSI Miami, they sent me to the uh, crime lab at the uh, LAPD training facility to to cool. learn about forensic science and all the different stuff. And I was like, wow, this is really fascinating. And there's all these just every role, depending on which roles you choose, every role has a different component that is something that you would not have. I probably wouldn't have been exposed to, you know, stuff that stuff that you wouldn't have have done, per se. Like, for example, I did a, a show called The Unicorn, which I just absolutely love. And um, I played uh, uh, I owned a landscape company. On it, or an electronics company on it, rather. Sorry, the uh, Walton on the landscape company. I owned an electronics, uh, like a wiring company, home electronics and whatnot on it. And so I had to learn all this stuff about home electronics and, yeah. you know, all of this industry jargon on the transponders and, you know, uh, Cat 5, Cat 6 cables and blah, 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 all this stuff that I would have never done, which I really appreciate. Yeah. 
I can kind of relate to that. It's a little bit different, but so I was a journalist kind of before I started my show. And okay. so I would get to write all these articles, but I'd have to research them, right? So I remember yes. certain things, like I would yes. interview people and go places, there was travel going on. So it was a little bit different in terms of that, but it is like I became a momentary expert on something. And so it's kind of interesting. <laughs> there are a lot of things that can it come is because up in conversation. There's so much going on in the world. Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's so, so much. much, like so all much of it. Explore. Don't you want to see all of it so and know all of it? And you get so caught up. That's the thing. And you get so caught up in your. You can get really caught up in your bubble, in your little sphere, and not really branch out. You know, because life takes you in all sorts of directions. The way that it goes, the way yeah. that life is not easy. So it, it it takes you in different ways, unexpected ways. Right. Okay, so let's get back to CSI Miami real quick. So that seems like it would be one of the coolest things to research and be able to kind of play out on screen. So was that was that kind of like, I mean, how many years were you on that? I was on that three years. Okay, so that's a pretty significant amount of time. Was that kind of the thing that made you, or I'm guessing you're super recognizable, right? Do people recognize you all the time? Oh, yeah. Like yeah, wherever yeah, you yeah. are? All over the world. Anywhere I get off the plane. What happens? Depends. Sometimes it's pandemonium. Sometimes it's just. Uh, sometimes it's just uh, uh, excitement. Sometimes it's a, let me buy you a drink. Sometimes it's come to my house and let me make you a meal. Sometimes it's it's just a smile. You know, it's, it's it it all depends. But it's uh, I tell you, I've done. I've been blessed to do work that has traveled and translated all over the world and you go places and you'll be in the corner of the middle of nowhere and somebody will recognize you and it's a it's a lovely feeling and it's also a bizarre feeling it's it's not something you'd never i don't i have never gotten used to there's a there's a, a loss of anonymity that is a very specific thing so it, it feels good when i do want to find myself in places where um, I can't hide. Huh. That is interesting. So it's like, you. I, I would imagine you always have that sense that somebody may be looking at you or thinking about you or observing what you're doing, right? No question. No doubt. And I'm a really big person physically. So I had that since I was like 15. But it shifted once I got into the movies because I went from people, you know, holding their purse tight to people being like, oh, hey, come in my house. It's a very interesting That's, dynamic uh, change. It's interesting. Yeah. I was reading um, Michelle Obama's most recent book, and she was saying how the thing that actually made her feel more like other was her height when she was growing up because she was always oh, super sure. tall. And she was like, yeah. it was about that because she grew up in a black community, you know, black family. So it wasn't about that. It was about her height. She like in school, they would always point out like she would be the last one in line or always in the back row. And do you need to go out? And in there, no, no, I thought okay. that's what I thought I did. No, no, no. I'm good. But in that, what it what that signifies, and I think that everybody can relate to it is, is that it's it's difference. It's difference that can make you feel awkward, but if properly celebrated, makes you feel unique. And I think that I, me personally, I know that I was blessed because I grew up in a household that really celebrated difference. It really celebrated your your uniqueness. My parents were really good at that. It's at, at celebrating your uniqueness so that you can, you know, excel, lean into it, lean into being unique. It's okay to not be like everyone else. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, we promote it. So that whether you're, fabulous. you know, uh, yeah, uh, uh, super tall, super short, you, you know, whatever it is. And that was Omar Miller. Make sure you subscribe to Really Famous for all of my intimate chats with your favorite TV and movie stars. And drop a comment about today's show. I'd love to hear what you have to say, what you thought. Was there something especially interesting that we talked about? Um, let me know. I read the comments and I also like to reply. And if you're subscribed, get ready for more revealing chats with celebrities. I'm Kara. Thanks for watching.